I'm Lisa. I'm the dramaturg and director. I'm Chris. I am the artistic director of CTC and the choreographer. I'm Caitlin and I play the narrator as well as um, I do the writing for the show. I'm Al. Um, I play the Queen of Hearts. Brilliant. And then what kind of inspired this new production? Well, we, uh, myself and Lisa, um, had, we sat down, had a catch up, uh, this time, was it in August last mm -hmm. year where we, we spoke about doing a new kind of adaption of a show and we wanted to have a look at something that was quite abstract, quite out there, but also could tell important stories on top of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we went through a few different shows um, and we kind of found ourselves with um, Alice in Wonderland. And we we're like, oh, that's something that we could ponder and play on. And we kind of went away, read the book. Um, and then we were like, oh, my gosh, so many ideas. It says this. It says this. <laughs> yeah. What does Lewis, or Lewis Carroll's background, how, what, what was, how was he perceived? How is it showing within the book? Um, so it kind of just like spiraled uh, yeah. from kind of last August um through to now really of like all these ideas of how we could play with the element of the sense of binary and what the term binary means within time within society within gender and how we can manipulate that and rip it apart as well which we um which we are looking at in the show at the moment yeah and then how about how do you go about making that tone and making it different, I suppose, because there's quite a few kind of been quite a few adaptations of the story. How do you kind of make it your own? I think the subject matter um, kind of makes it new already. Um, are there unfortunately aren't many people um, telling these stories, even though we kind of think we're seeing it a lot on Twitter um, and um, you know, people saying, oh, you know, there's lots of people exploring gender identity now. And it's like, well, that's always kind of existed, but I don't think it's necessarily existing widely in theatre. So that kind of helped us straight away in the in the rehearsal process. Um, I've kind of been following CTC before working with them. They're always making these kind of brilliant inclusive shows and talking about um, for my, in my opinion, the subjects that matter, relevant um, subjects. So straight away we get in the room and we've got a wonderfully diverse cast, um, gender diverse um, and otherwise. So just exploring kind of everyone's views, everyone's backgrounds and having that particular group of people makes it unique straight away. And then obviously this is dance theatre. So again, it's something that um, combining the text, the subject matter and the genre makes it a really unique piece of theatre. Yes. And um, for you guys' performance, kind of when you come in, kind of what attracted you to the project? Do you want to go first? You go first. Um, so <laughs> I <laughs> what attracted me first because is Chris um, approached me with the concept um, and originally asked me to write two pieces of spoken word for the show um, and it was oh maybe um, something to do with um, um, queerness and identity of um, finding your authentic self and I was like okay cool uh, maybe something about going down like the rabbit hole and transformation and Alice in Wonderland has already always been like a really important story for me growing up and I have a younger sibling called Alice and so there's been like hundreds of copies of Alice in Wonderland in, in my like a home like growing up and everything oh who's <laughs> booking <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> and um and um I had always been thinking about it um a lot so when I got this prompt I was so excited and I I just immersed myself in it and I couldn't stop writing and I got so excited because the, the first thing that came to my mind was, oh my gosh, what if a Alice is non-binary? What does it mean if we have a relatable character that is not related to through gender? We have we have someone here and because that's what I, I feel like needs to happen and develop a little more within our um, society is learning how to relate to each other whilst understanding that we're different. 
um, to stop a lot of these like clashes that we get and a lot of like hurt and pain and confusion. Like if we can like just come to the core of what every like one is, then I feel like people like a lot of this, um, trying to think of a word that's not a swear, um, <laughs> you know, like just like rubbish that is like kind of comes out and stuff. I feel like I'm, I'm waffling a bit, so I'm trying to come back to <laughs> what I was saying. Um, what attracted you? attracted me um yeah it was it was about exploring this narrative of of having this non-binary character and trying to get through life and discover who am i if i don't identify with what's been presented to me how do how do i find a sense of self and how how do i then move forward and how do i find a place within society where i don't really feel like there is a place for me and and i feel like I mean, identity has been such a massive thing. I mean, we did another show called Identity. Um, <laughs> so I feel like this is like an ongoing thing and I never want someone to feel um, that sense of loneliness and like, that sense of like you don't belong to somewhere because you everybody does. Like you've come into this world, there is space for you. Yeah. Like, there that is, was what's so lovely, yeah. I think, about your writing. So Caitlin was saying, Chris asked me to write one or two pieces. Caitlin came back the next day with basically a novel, which was amazing. Um, and what's quite lovely about what they're saying is, I think this show started and, and still, hopefully, is very much um, who we've written it for or who, um, who we're making it for, I guess, are... Um, the kind of gender questioning, perhaps people um, coming to watch the show. Of course, I want those people to feel seen. But also, the more we've kind of delved into it, it's Alice in Wonderland in general is about growing up and the cycle of life mm. and how painful life can be um, in the original uh, text which we've incorporated into our one as well the uh, the first poem talks about life being hammered out and even that image imagery of kind of life being hammered out it's not a soft image um mm -hmm. and we all know life's tough um if and certainly if you don't fit into societal norms um and lewis carroll definitely didn't um the author of alice in wonderland um they were a poet from a military family um a philosopher in a particularly religious family um, so not feeling like you fit in, I think is something everyone can relate to. So even though we set out with a particular demographic in mind, I think everyone will yeah. feel uh, connected to the piece. Everyone goes through transformations of self. And I feel like that's something that we've captured like throughout this. Like, you, you know, we, we talk about, you know, going from like um, childhood, adolescent into adulthood. And every time we go into this, we become a new version of ourselves. And what is that? There's like that fact about like after like, 10 years or 15 years or something like you're you are not like a single part of your body it's only like in your heart has still has the same cells like because you completely regenerated or something have you ever heard of that? no it's oh, really cool um, yeah, <laughs> um, and I can't remember it properly so forgive me if I'm wrong but yeah we are constantly evolving and I think uh -huh. that this that's something else that makes this so relatable to to anyone it's you know and then constantly going through life and as you change and you look you're able to look back and your awareness of the world grows like you know yeah, who are you as you go through all these different stages? Well, okay, I'm one. <laughs> <laughs> but this is why we got a novel back when asking yeah. for one page. So I. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Then, how do you guys, as you say, you kind of touch on incorporating the kind of original text and everything, but how do you guys make it your own with the movement, with the kind of magical characters that are in the story? I think the spoken word definitely helped because uh, we started very much with the different chapters um, of Alice taking the themes of growing up, the cycle of life, um, but then Caitlin very much ran with their own ideas, personal experiences as well, which makes it so authentic. Um, and we kind of then in the rehearsal room worked from those words, um, pulling it back to... Um, I guess was my job to pull it back to the text, the original text, whenever I felt we were straying too far from um, the, the story, I guess, the original story. So we still have those wonderful characters and what they meant in the original text and how we can kind of relate to them now. Um, so the Cheshire Cat, for example, 
is I think if you're thinking of the the Disney version, um, it's the kind of pink cat that appears and disappears, which is which is true of the book as well. But it's the only character that actually gives Alice straightforward guidance. Um, so in our version, they're they're playful still. Um, but a bit more comforting than than the other characters because they actually give. Whereas in the Disney version, they're quite tricksy. But in the original text, they they're the only ones that give the the correct guidance. Um, and then our rabbit, for example, um, is uh, that's a bit more of a men the, a menacing character. Quite eerie. Yeah. Quite eerie. <laughs> a bit more of the Donnie Darko rabbit than the uh, Disney rabbit. Um, so we've kind of got elements of we we've leaned into basically how painful it is to grow up, um, and it's not always going to be bright and sunny but we want to leave people with a message of hope that whatever it is you're going through you can get through it um for me particularly um and to sort of go into a slightly darker topic but for me particularly it's really important to me this project i am um, do a lot of outreach work um work with a lot of um young kids of all different backgrounds and, and gender um identities and there is just a large um, suicide rate in trans teens. Um, so I think work like this, not only is it wonderful and entertaining, I think it's important. Um, and I and I don't say that from sort of being that sort of director says, isn't it, their work's really important. But just I, I, I see it day to day. It's This is the work that's needed. Um, and it's been so lovely for me because I've invited um, lots of my non-binary students and their parents to watch it. And I think more than anything that's going to be so wonderful to see them in the audience see what their reaction is and so they can see themselves on stage beautifully said beautifully said <laughs> you know, you've touched on it already that you've you, you lean on the book but then do you kind of look back at the other adaptations or do you kind of just do it kind of fresh from the book and make your own kind of I mean, I didn't re-watch any films or anything, but of course I've seen the like Alice in Wonderland, Johnny Depp, and I've seen the Disney one millions of times as a kid, and I loved them all. Um, I didn't re-watch anything, but they've certainly been swimming around in my brain for sure. I just went back to the original text. I think um, certainly my job pre coming into rehearsals um, as dramaturg was to kind of look at the text as... Um, not just Lewis Carroll's, but Caitlin's as well. Um, and just to make sure we were telling the story we wanted to tell. And I think that's, that's always your best bet when you want to create original work is um, you're going to be influenced by the things you've seen and the, and the various things that have gone along. I think for me, to not have seen it so recently means that I can be influenced artistically um, without... I know fully that we've gone into it with fresh eyes then and just seen what we can find in the room. And we benefited as well from an R&D, which is just mm -hmm. such a luxury now. Um, and it was a different group of people. Some were different. Um, and what was really interesting for me is seeing how um, bringing a different group of performers this time completely changes it having different people bring their own life experiences and their own style of dance even can can even change a character or or the way the story is being told. Um, so I think that helps keep it unique as well. Yeah, and so you guys are performers then, how do you kind of put your own stamp on these kind of characters? It's so unreal, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that is, I mean, like playing Queen of Hearts, I think it's kind of like one of the reasons I'm very drawn into this production in the first place. Because Chris was like, hey, do you want to be part of this? And I was like, oh, what is that? Oh, yeah, Twist on Alice in Wonderland. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, I want you to play Queen of Hearts. And I'm like, me? Like, I don't, you know, like, I'm, I don't look like, a, like that conventional characters. So I was just, so I literally just delved into it with, without any expectation and I mean, coming from a background, coming like in my country, this would not have happened. Like I would not have been casted as the Queen of Hearts because with the way I look and the way I am. So I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. Oh, I didn't know that. Elle hasn't said that to us in rehearsal. And I, that's lovely. 
Sorry? That's that's oh, really, yeah. 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 That's why it's not lovely. It's, <laughs> it's obviously sad, but lovely for us yeah. that we get to have Ella's Queen of Hearts. Yes. Amazing. Then kind of I know you've kind of touched it already, but what would you want an audience member to take away from this production specifically? It will say one thing. Yeah, I think I think um, a sense of hope that regardless of how tough life gets or how much you don't feel you fit in, um, you can find your people there out there mm -hmm. and you can find happiness. It's always worth holding on. That would be mine. That's nice. Mine is connection. Um, I think a lot of the time, you know, we go to the theatre and we think, oh, that was nice. That was a nice show. That was a nice dance. That was a nice, you know, routine or something like that. And I want people to connect with humans on stage and to be like, oh, my gosh, I can. I felt like that before. And what they've demonstrated is exactly how I felt in that moment. Um, and to have that whoa or something that they didn't even realise of being like, I'm so glad I saw that because... I might have found something in myself that I didn't even realise, but by seeing it there, um, it's so it's apparent and that they can have that connection and bond with the story and the artists on stage rather than thinking, you know, we want them to think, yes, it's it's wonderful and great, um, but just to be like, I felt like that before and I can feel uplifted and empowered by the end as well. Yeah, I was... I feel like I'm running out of things to say because of both of those things. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but um, I think one thing is like inspiration for to be able to, uh, I'd love to someone's mind to get caught alight and be like, wow, um, they took something and I never thought of looking at it in that way. And what if I was to do that? And, you know, things that have been done before, like how could I do that in something new and fresh and in a way that feels um, truthful um, and exciting to me? I think that's something that I would love. Yeah. Uh, also, going off of that, I think that's one one of the amazing things about the, this production is that it's not it, not only are we performing, but we make the audience question things. Um, I mean, as a performer myself, it, it's just it just feels very liberating, and and yeah, I just hope audience feel the same thing. Oh, beautifully said. But I was reading the website, and alongside the production, there is kind of post show talks. There's kind of the you know, workshops and things how important is it to have those events as well for this kind of audience i i, I think it's really important mm -hmm. i think it's you know as i will say in general kind of theater we go to the theater we watch a show and we leave and actually you know people might be talking about the show coming out um and i think it's i think it's really important for for an audience to actually chat to the creatives and the cast within the show and be like how did this how, how was this perceived for you what what did you think what thought came into mind because i think not only you know for us as a cast and creative to kind of say we thought of this we thought of this um we, we've even been talking about chakras and things like that with within our rehearsals and to kind of talk about a certain uh was it a card uh the the spade is mm -hmm. like a, a resemblance of thought and um and the mind mm -hmm. and how we can actually discuss about that to, again for the audience to be like oh my gosh i didn't even think about that and then mm -hmm. it could go into something else but then it also gives clarity to audiences as well to say you know this is how i perceive this bit um we can have a talk and it might be that was spot on or that's you know that's great for us because then we can delve more into that within our shows or when we have notes and things like that um to see how things are perceived um and again to gain more of a connection mm -hmm. and you know i think it's really important for to create community community is is key to change the world <laughs> yeah. and you know if we are doing a small smidgen of that then i think by creating these safe spaces where people can communicate and talk yeah. freely i i think I think we're doing all right um, within that. And with our outreach workshops as well, I think what Lisa kind of spoke about is that young people, especially in this day and age, are so impressionable about what is thrown to them 
by society, by nurture of families, peers, and, um, you know, going on from there. And I think it's, it's really important for us to create safe spaces for people to be their authentic self. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you might not get that from schools. You might not get that from the home that you're in, from teachers and things like that. And we want to say, what do you think? You know, all this has been like, you're this, supposed to do this, supposed to do this, it's going to be like this, we've got to be like this. But it's like, actually, how do you feel? And I think when, you, from experience of doing these workshops, our self-identity inspired workshops, it is mind blowing. Yeah. It is absolutely mind blowing. And we've done them from Leicester yeah. to Colchester. Um, and just to hear how intelligent young people are, mm -hmm. um, and how they see the world and see the world going. I think it's, it's, it's vital. It is so vital to not only, you know, to have commercial theatre, which is great, but to have theatre that can speak, mm -hmm. that can allow people to question, um, and for people to feel safe as well. Um, so I think it's it's really important that we continue with our outreach, um, continue with our um, our post show discussions, um, and even you know, it, unfortunately, we didn't we we got denied our arts council funding for the show, um, and you know the typical thing is to be like, oh, scrap that, scrap that, scrap that. But for us, it's really really important that we can make the show as accessible as possible to everyone um so yeah that that's why i think it's important that we that we continue the work that we do yes heartily agree i asked this question to everyone i interview especially coming off kind of welfare today yesterday but you've kind of covered it there but what does world well what does theater mean to you guys uh expression culture community um entertainment joy um inclusivity i think it's all it's notorious for being an inclusive environment um i think sometimes when people talk about being a theater kid when i'm having that conversation with people um and they're no longer in the theater and they say i was a theater kid um sometimes that translates as queer I was, you know, but that's where they found their people. Or I just think it has people from sort of all, all different walks of life coming together with one goal in mind, and that's to entertain, to educate, to unite, um, whatever that particular uh, piece of theatre is is aiming to do um, with, with high levels of skill. <laughs> um, and I just think it's just a, a wonderful medium um of that expression yeah i think it allows you to be seen it mm -hmm. allows for people to be seen and i think that's why no matter what <laughs> the government says about you know go and work in cyber and all that kind of stuff <laughs> it will never happen theater has been around since the era like the beginning mm -hmm. and and i just think it it won't go anywhere it will not go anywhere um, and there's a thing when I was in Cabaret, actually, our director said about how they read about when they were going to the concentration camps, the performers did one final performance for everyone in the in the carriages Oof. and how upsetting that image is. But how the last thing that they did was make sure that they could entertain and make sure everyone felt safe Um and feel happy and mm -hmm. just to forget to forget and to feel seen in a moment of crisis and i think we can all relate to that with the pandemic of how things went online like theater is everlasting it's mm -hmm. timeless um and i think it yeah it really allows people to be seen um i was gonna say um theater to me is um connection um where people can come and they can sit down for a period of time and immerse themselves in a world that is either like theirs or completely different and then they can go on a journey of emotions and they can start processing things in their own life as they're watching it and i feel like theater is such a great way for 
um, presentation of um, of ideas of um, things that have um, maybe not gone and um, been as as good as they could have been, or um, how can we how what sort of future can we build? And and there's so much that I feel like uh, that can be presented in that way in a in a form that is um, accessible because I feel like not always people want to think about things and they, they're quite happy to just um, s- stay with how things are because people can be quite um, creatures of comfort um, but in a nice safe environment you can um, see the potential of what a future could look like um, to the inspiration of um, theatre. How the hell am I going to top that? Okay. <laughs> For me, I think theater allows me to be free. It gives me freedom because um, like stepping out of the rehearsal room, like after doing the show, somehow you're back into to, to fit into the society in a way. And for some reason, when you step into the rehearsal room or like when you're doing a show, it has that sense of freedom. Like I can just be who I want to be, wherever I want to be. And yeah, I love that. Beautiful, superb work, all. My final question then for you: You've all talked it well, but can you condense into three words why someone should book to come and see the show? Three words: <laughs> original, visually stimulating. That's two. Innovative. Visually stimulating original work. It, yeah. It's innovative, innovative, inclusive. Okay. LGBT plus led. So many words. <laughs> <laughs> not three. Not three. <laughs> immersive. Yeah, immersive. I was. Yeah. I was say very immersive. I think emotionally, I feel very emotionally immersed. So there's about nine there. <laughs> I agree that's a question. <laughs> well, brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today, guys. The show is on at the Theatre Peckham from the 6th to the 23rd of April.